Happy Halloween, everybody! Yeah! Not hardly, but, um, fuck it. It's the October season, so we gotta do some, at least some Halloween-ish reviews. And we just got back from Dracula Untold. Um, so yeah, we got we got a little cross here because we couldn't mm -hmm. figure out how to get out of the way, so fuck it, it's part of the review now. Um, it works, too. It, it's, it's very symbol, it's symbol, it's symbolic! <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, we just got done with uh, Dracula Untold more than, what time is it now? Oh, gee, not more than maybe like 40 minutes ago. This was, this was first and foremost a short goddamn movie. It's really short. Uh, we got in there like at 9.15, we got 10 minutes of trailers, so that's 9.25, we got out of there after credits, which lasted 8 to 10 minutes, and that just decided to rear its ugly head again. <laughs> we had to get all this... We had to get all of Mark's crap out of the way. Normally, we're doing this on a small camera, so it's not showing this part. Yeah. Um, now, I got out of there at 11 after credits. So, this movie was at most an hour and 35 minutes long. Yeah, we got out, and I looked at my And you know what? And I saw I, it, and I felt, it felt short at parts. It did. It felt rushed in the beginning. Um, for overall, first, what do we think of the movie? It was okay. It could have been better. Oh, it, yeah. <laughs> it could definitely have been better. Um... I liked it fine. Mm -hmm. It's decent. Little, it's a decent retelling of Dracula, first and foremost. Um, uh, it get, definitely gets this different take on who the guy was, because uh, I'm. Um, well, we'll talk about. Yeah, overall, I generally enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it's um, it, it's definitely suffers from its flaws. Um, some of the things I liked, uh, I thought Chris, uh, Louis, Chris, wow, well, sorry, that's Captain America. Uh, Luke, <laughs> I thought Luke Evans was pretty good. Luke Evans was uh, yeah. carrying carried the movie pretty damn well. Was, all the acting was pretty good in this. Yeah, most of the acting was pretty decent. Nothing I, I can think of was terribly bad. No. Uh, yeah, Luke Evans definitely helps bring a character uh, to the screen that's definitely uh, drenched in the blood of history. Because uh, Vlad the Impaler is, you know, famous for the impalings and everything that went on with that. But he, he, even I watched an interview with him recently that, um, d despite what we know of Jack, he was a great leader. He did lead uh -huh. his people. He was, in, st in fact, a caring father and a good husband, at least from what we know. Um, so, you know, despite all the horrific things he did, and he did some crazy-ass shit, um, he, he still was a great man in many respects. Uh, and this, and this, that is shown in the movie that he, obviously this is played for Hollywood, he's the vampire or whatnot, um, that he chose this to protect his people. Um, from the Turks. From the Turks. Which, um, I'll get to the Turks in a little bit, but, um, what did you, what, anything you want to comment on Luke Evans at all? Um, he takes his shirt off very <laughs> often. <laughs> I know, actually no, he does not take his shirt off well, very not, often. Not very often, but he... At he prudent has, moments. And it was like, oh, focus on... The first time he took it off, he got back from being attacked by the vamp, the, like, the vampire in the movie that gives, makes him Dracula. And um, he's like, I basically gotta take a bath. And you see, I see him take his shirt, I'm like, really? He had to get the obligatory shirtless scene in? <laughs> Which I'll give him complete props. The guy's got a good body on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good actor, attractive... Great body on him. If he's not single, that woman's got a catch. <laughs> he was a nice guy the too. The woman playing his wife too. She was gorgeous. Oh, she was. Oh, I, oh, yeah. uh, I should have. I can't. Just, it was like Sasha something was her name. Um, I'm really? pretty sure that was it. Because we, I don't have it up because because yeah, I can't, I don't get internet don't access know. right now. But um, um, his, his the actress playing his wife, who's also fairly decent. Uh, I can't think of anything wrong with her performance. Mm -hmm. Um, well, she was she was very uh attractive wow I'm, um <laughs> um the overall story it's yeah it's why well, dracula became the vampire from the vampire you see in the trailer who is uh not ben to come back from what i thought the voice was very similar though uh great that guy's got uh, what was his name charles charlie's uh dance. charles dance charles dance that guy's got a voice on him Mm -hmm. He's got, he's, got, he's got one of those orgasmic voices. He, he tends to play the bad guy. Yeah, um, you're right. I've seen him. I'm sure he's done some voiceover work, too. I feel like I've heard that voice in, like, an anime or a cartoon or something. I um, But, yeah, he basically... The story is he gains this power to protect his family from the Turks. Um, who, you know, the salt... The, you know what's the sultan, you said, right? The, the sultan, sultan. The sultan, who was, like, an old friend of his. That played by, uh, Grandma Cooper. Who is, they grew up kind of like brothers. Yeah, who was, um... Donald Cooper Brother. was okay. He's a kind of ter standard IMD head of the world bad guy. Um, 
the thing I was going to comment, I, I made mention, I would comment, is that historically, they overlooked some stuff with the Turks. Like, that 1,000-boy army was not just for fighting. There was pedophilia going on in there. Really? There was boy screwing going on yeah, in the Turks. But... It wasn't just for fighting, folks. They uh, respectively overlooked that. Same with 300 Spartans, Oh, too, yeah, though. 300 Spartans were predominantly a homosexual society. Yeah, but they didn't put I mean, that there in was there, there was obviously they had some sexual women for procreation, and I'm sure some of them did enjoy having sex with women, despite what Mark will say. Like, no, they all were gay. No, they were not all gay. So, a when lot of them were gay. When you're away from women, yeah, when you are. Yeah, when you're away, you know, you learn to love. Uh, <laughs> learn to, you learn to be tempted by the fruit of another. But, um, no, um, so, yeah, um, that, that, that's the main story, and it's him dealing with that, and obviously he... Obviously, he is, because there's a plot in the movie where if he can survive three days without drinking blood, he can become human again. Obviously, he's not going to be human again. You know, uh, I was thinking there for a while, like, he's doing really good. Maybe he will. And then it's like, oh, no, this war's coming up. No, he won't. Well, no, here's he the thing. Won't. I know for a fact that he was going to, well, first off, because it's Dracula, and he's probably Dracula by the end of the movie, regardless. Like, Dracula. His name is Dracula. He's Vlad the Impaler, but it's Dracula. Um... It's, it's Son of the Dragon, and he changes it to Son of the Devil. Um, which, whatever. He's, I, he's got he's got really cool armor. I well, like the design of his armor. He kind of changed it. Well, yeah, I mean, because the vampire says... Um, well, might as well talk about the vampire real quick. Um, he's just known as the Master of Vampires. He's not given a name. Uh, played by Charles. I loved him. I, I fucking loved him. He was, uh, he was creepy. <clears throat> he was polite. And he was scary as fuck. Oh, yeah. It's, that, well, that scene in the cave where they're basically talking about why... He wants the vampiric power. It was a really intense scene between the two of them. Mm-hmm. And, appa- and apparently, apparently, what it is is I'm stuttering a little bit. Sorry. His tongue mm-hmm. was gross. But oh yeah, just like you know, like, you think you know what it means to be a monster, and they just ah, ah, ah. Uh, they just he he he, uh, he just licks a cut he made on his neck. He's like you have no idea. It's like yeah, I mean, uh, as in human terms, I know what being a monster is like. But yeah, in your terms, no. No, I'm no. like, ew, you should wash that. This thing gets infected. Uh, well, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take your medicine. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Um, you know, I just want that. Hopefully, when I put this up, be like the cat. You never know. He's like, oh, 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 oh. Just stay like that for five minutes on screen, and it's just like, okay, I got that caption. <laughs> um, no. Um, we'll get to the end where he showed. This is spoiler, so yeah, we're I'm gonna talk about stuff, but um, he shows back up at the end. Uh, we'll get to that later, though. Um, yeah, generally speaking, most of the actors are fine. Um, the problems in this movie. Let me put it this way: this uh, the one. Some of the problems in this movie are like minor problems, but they're so glaringly obvious minor problems. Like when he actually does feed on people or bu- and bite people, uh-huh. he like okay. He can't save his wife. It's and you know what that scene reminded me of? His wife gets pushed off a basically a, a balcony. No, she. Oh no, she falls she off a balcony falls because, because the stone breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So he tries to save her. First off, that was really bad green screen. <laughs> you could tell. I I don't know if it was really bad. I could tell it was green screen. I wasn't effect. paying attention. I was like, dude, can you not go faster? Your wife is gonna well, die. Well, well, also his powers were waning at that point because the powers oh, basically my. last for three days. His powers were waning at that point, and um, and and then Mark's <laughs> is it uh, real quickly, folks? I'm using the laptop so I can actually upload it tonight instead of waiting on you. So you're making fun of me. Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, lock your door too. Yeah. Um. So anyway, Mark's needs to complain because he's not been getting these up, and I'm using my laptop today so I can actually get this up tonight or tomorrow. Um. So, yeah, anyway, so like last three days, so basically, it's like the final day, and she's falling, and that scene, do you remember Dark Shadows with Johnny Depp? Yes. That scene reminded me so much when he's diving to save the girl in Dark Shadows. A little bit, yeah, but I was like, Ooh. And it clearly, and he doesn't save her, she's dying, she says, drink my blood. Mm-hmm. So, right there, all the, oh, he, he's actually basically proven that he could beat the vampire, but then shit happens, and he's got to basically feed on his wife. So if he's not like becomes Dracula to basically save his son. Mm-hmm. But you see there's a clear bite mark on her neck from what he fed on her. And then when he's mourning on her funeral pyre, I'm assuming it was it, a pyre, I'm sure they burned it. There. It's not there. It's like, wow, I didn't know <laughs> mortuaries existed back then that had such good makeup. Oh my 
<laughs> it's fine. I'm, my computer screen. Well, I went the um, screens here for a moment. Um, so yeah, there's that. And the same way he fed on Dominic Cooper, uh, the pr- the Sultan. You saw nothing. You there. saw nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so there's that. There's like minor things like that. Also, it's as always with Vampire Lord, he can't go in the sunlight. But there are times where you clearly see sunlight on him and he's not burning. Yeah. So it's like slip at the slip at the special effects there. What? Um. I guess so, they figured, oh, it's not that bright. Um, so, so the actor sequences, for the most part, were fine. Uh, some of them were moving really fast. Silver like they're, they're, hurt him Silver too. hurts him, yeah. Um, basically, the vampire lore stays true. Silver hurts him, sunlight hurts him. He's not affected, he's actually not affected by a cross, surprisingly. He wasn't, but the others were. Oh, it was no, no. very strange. Wait, um, he, he's not affected by a cross during the three days where the curse could be lifted. Okay. But then the priest comes... With the cross to save the boy, because he ends up turning a lot of his people to vampires to basically save his son, and then they, which I'll admit is a really cool scene. You like that? You said that was yeah, your favorite. Yeah, I scene. liked that. He turns everyone to vampires. Basically, what like happens? All the women and all the people that are left that haven't been killed by the or Turks. Are dying. Uh, so basically, what happens is you see him just slowly walking with this giant thundercloud and boomers happening, and these vampires start flying in and massacring people all That's over the fucking so place. Cool. <laughs> Of course, they were like, we're going to eat your son now because they're all our enemies. He'll just distract you. Be a good prince. Then the, uh, his priest friend, I think it was, oh no, it was yeah. maybe like a monk. It was so a monk. He, he comes and saves him. He's got a cross keeping him bay. You know, I'm not sure if um, the cross would have affected him because he never actually points the cross at him. He's keeping the others at bay, he keeps the pointing away, away from Dracula. So I don't know if the cross actually would have um, worked on him. But I... Mm. See, I don't, I don't know. All I know is... That 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 confused me too. Where it didn't seem like it was affecting him, but it was affecting the others. Well, the others. First of all, I don't think the others were really religious enough to really care. Uh, also, they were like embracing their vampire, where he was still actually, despite all the shit he had done at the end, despite all of his um, hunger for violence and all that stuff. Uh, despite he ca- felt bad. He felt he didn't enjoy the fact that he did it. So I think because he's still basically human, uh, uh, somewhere in there. Um. Then the like he like lets the yeah, cloud. You know what? That was the thing. Like, the minute he actually became full vampire, like full vampire, he actually was able to block out the sun. So Dracula controls the weather now, I guess. No. <laughs> just, okay, and just spray opens and then kills opens everyone. the sun and burns everyone, including himself. And then this guy who shows up three times in the movie comes to save him. And this guy is essentially the Renfield from the original Dragon. This series. guy wanted to be his slave. He's like, I want to serve, serve you. Serve you. Drink my Master. blood. So he's like the Igor Renfield of this. And then he ends up saving him in the end. Bringing um, him back to bringing life. Bringing him alive. Yeah. Um, life. Some of the effects were fine. Others, like the bad effects was for the most part pretty Those decent. Those were pretty good. Yeah. They, um, they especially when you see them, especially blood. when you were seeing them crawling on the, um, the tower. That looks cool, but yeah. like I was like, those aren't. Of course, really then of course there's a scene you see in the trailer, which is basically straight out of a fucking Transylvania video game, uh, or, or Frank. Uh, is it Frank? And, I don't know what the actual. It's not Transylvanian, is it? Um, uh, Castlevania. That's the name of the, uh, of the game series. This is like straight out of Castlevania shit, where he basically makes a giant fist out of bats and punches mm. the ground. You see that in the trailer. That was cool. I like. It is. That. It's a cool scene. Take the bat. Because That's the just idiot, like killing. Because people. the Sultan decided, okay, if they, if they can, they won't fear what they can't see. He blindfolds his army because they're trained as boys to basically to fight blindfold and march. So they march in. It's like, fine. You're not going to see this shit coming. That was stupid on your part. Yeah. Um. Because the people were probably going to run away because they heard he was a sorcerer. He has like. Yeah, he's powers. a he's a monster. Um, I mean, but some of the some were weird. Like I, I explained this to you when we were, got done with the movie in the theater that um, there's a scene where he takes a guy's sword and stabs him with his own sword, and then we're seeing this POV shot from the guy where he's seeing the reflection of what Dracula is doing in his sword, yeah. and then he falls to the ground as Dracula pulls the sword out of him. He's falling to the ground bleeding, and we see, just see him falling, and we see guys just flying up into the night. And one guy just lands on him, and that's that. And we see that scene again, or that kind of effect again, with the sword fight between him and the Sultan, which was, again, fine in terms of action when you could see it, but it it was, like, being obscured a lot. The fact that he was, like, having, like, feeling very off because there were so much silver coins in the room or something like that. Yeah. Uh, 
And yeah. I thought it was sunlight. Yeah, like it was, it was like burning, overly bright. Like, but I'm like, no, because he blotted out the sun. Yeah. That, well, the only like, thing I thought of is because he has these bags of coins hanging for like strategic purposes. When it might cuts these coins off, I'm like, make it rain, make it rain, make it rain. <laughs> It's like, yeah, Dragon's just like, yeah. <laughs> um, there's some, there are some problems in this movie. It's not perfect by any stretch. It's short, too. Really short. It's, all, it's felt rushed at points. It felt it, like, it felt like we got a lot, but at the same time, I was like, oh, this is well, long, but then it's like, I, it's really not that well, long. Well, I mean, I looked, like, one of the things I thought was, um, it was rushed in the beginning, I thought. Uh, like, we were like, okay, Dracula. We're doing this kind of explanation of Dracula. Here, where he came from. Blah, blah, blah. Now we're seeing Dracula. Now. They would give stills a lot of what was going yeah, they on did. when he was younger. There like, were a lot of stills and yeah. slow down shots. Hey, don't get me wrong. We, uh, for those, many of us have heard the story of Vlad the Impaler before, so we don't really need a recap. But still, um, you could have done at least a bit more detail. I didn't need, I didn't need to see his childhood. That I'm, I'm glad I'm actually glad we didn't see. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm glad I'm glad we actually saw his relationship with his family because yeah. that that really is what his driving force in this movie. And you know, he, he Luke Evans really does sell this character in terms of that he's a man who's tortured by the past he did, uh, the things he did in his past, like including the impaling, which he does again in gusto after he annihilates an entire army of a thousand men single handedly. Which was a I, I'll admit that was probably actually my favorite scene where he um she first gets his power. And they just like, I will say to you, they just slowly walks out onto the battlefield in his nice clothes. I, I don't I want that coat. I don't know what type that of coat is. Nice. That was a nice coat. Just slowly it just calmly walks out, charges out, and just starts annihilating and obliterating fuckers. <laughs> Luke Evans really is like one of the best parts of this movie. Him and um Charlie Dance, uh, as the master vampire. Um I can't think of much else. Again, some of the effects work is not overly great. Like, um, that weird tongue thing. That tongue thing was, um, we we basically lick some blood off his neck. Um, the tongue was, um, a little much. Uh, I don't think you actually need to do that, really. Um, some of the, most of the bad effects were fine, but some of it was, uh, a little off. Mostly when, most of the bad effects I liked, and, uh, by all means, if you're being, was when he was actually turning into bats, not when he was controlling that the bats. That was interesting. Yeah, I, I liked when he was controlling the bats a little bit more than when he turned into... But that was interesting. For oh, yeah. Me. He doesn't actually fly. He turns well, into he, a he, swarm of well, bats. Well, um, the master vampire uh, basically explains that he's like, you'll have the strength of a hundred men. You'll have the hand senses. You'll have the speed of the night or animals. And you control the animals. So when he starts running to try to get to these uh, to his uh, home, he runs start running so fast, he literally turns into bats. And he's like, what the... F-? Nice. Okay. <laughs> Dude, and now he's just like almost like night crawling, teleporting all over the place. Just boop, 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 boop. Uh, so that, that's actually, I like that bad effect more than actually the giant mass. Don't, don't get me wrong. The giant mass of bats actually looked really good. Um, you know what I didn't like? I didn't like the fact we kind of had some semi main bad guy Turks. Like there was that one main like bad Turk villain who, um, he yeah, scared, who, who he scared cool. off the cliff. Remember that one where he was, uh, where he was in the yeah. forest? And I, there was that guy. I'm like, I didn't really care for that guy all that much. He's like, and then there was that, that one that was like trying to like, he was like trying to take the children and he just like stabs them. Oh, that them. guy. Yeah, um, that one yeah he was like, he was essentially the messenger. The he, was, he was like the uh, Persian messenger, basically. <laughs> uh, from us, uh, you know, 300, except instead of, you know, throwing him into a pit of death, which I assume has giant spikes <laughs> or something, he just skewers him with his own sword. Oh. Um... That was a cool weapon, too, the, like, double... Oh, yeah, yeah, I will admit, I will say that, yeah, the guy guy had some uh, cool weaponry. He's got, like, these almost, like, um... Oh, crap. Oh, like a a hand axe. It's like a hand axe, almost. On, like, both ends. Yeah, like, on both... It's like, uh, because, you know what, to be nerdy a little bit, if you know Star Trek, it's a little bit like a Klingon battle axe, but more designed as a sword. I know. A little bit. Um, so, yeah, the ending... We had a, you we were a little odd on the ending. Oh, what did you think? Okay, so first off, before we uh, to, uh, explain our thoughts, Dracula actually obviously he survives, gets saved at the end by his uh, by the minion who wants to be his helper. And we see him in modern day walking mm-hmm. around, just you know walking around. They see this woman who looks basically, it's assuming it's the same actress, so it's like reincarnated or something like that. But she's got shorter. She's hair, got shorter. Like, she's she's, obviously, like she's, she's a modern day version hair. of his uh, ex his former lover, his wife. And so he sees her. 
And she, he just kind of starts flirting around. And then he says, the, like, the poem that was their wedding vow. And she, they start having a conversation. We see the uh, master vampire Charlie Dance character just tapping his long nails, which he still has the long nails, despite he looks all proper in a business suit. Um, so he's not that grotesque thing you see in the yeah, trailer. He's yeah. cleaned up because he's probably I thought at first people. he would still, because he had the creepy nails, he well, still look Yeah, like... right, like he's going to be just sitting around <laughs> with those creepy nails. <laughs> yeah, he's probably been eating a lot of people to uh, get a look back. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he's just like, oh, you know, and the game is on. Because apparently the way he became a vampire, he's got tricked by a demon. And then the way he got freed was, you know, Dr- uh, Dracula it drank blood within three days. So that's how he's free. And he's going to get his revenge on the demon and stuff like that. He was going to use Dracula as his pawn. So that, and then yeah, the movie ends on that. Um, why don't you say how you thought about that? Because I need a moment to actually figure out how am I going to say what I thought. Yeah, it was kind of, uh, what do you think, cliche? Well, cliche, yes. Yeah. Opening to a sequel, obviously. Like, oh, of course, his wife is reincarnated and he falls for a chick who looks like <laughs> his wife. Oh, no, she also knew the poem, too, so it's quite possible she is, like, maybe, like, a her in a, maybe another life or something yeah. like that. Granted, he's immortal, so whatever. Uh, my thoughts on that is, because I know why that scene's actually in there for several reasons. Um... Because they actually, kind of like how um, the Marvel movies are making a cinematic universe, Universal, which I believe are the ones who did this, yeah, are actually trying to make a cinematic monster universe now. And Dracula's obviously one of the Universal monsters, so they're trying to include him you in that like universe. Disney's doing the whole... Yeah, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Fox is trying to get in that game now, uh, Sony's trying to do that game now, so... Universal's like, what do we got? We got the Universal monsters, let's make a combined universe with these guys. <laughs> Ooh, uh, do you have a werewolf movie? We'll probably have a werewolf movie, movie absolutely. Uh, same with the mummy. I know there's a mummy one in the works. Um, <clears throat> Wolfman, maybe. Oh, obviously Wolfman. Um, uh, Frankenstein will probably have another one. Actually, we Wolfman technically already had. We technically already had another Frankenstein one with I Frankenstein. I just don't know if you can include that into I this universe. Gargoyles. I think gargoyles. Give them mini guns. I'll watch that sequel. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you wa- if watch our Eye Frankenstein review, you'd know what I'm talking about on that one. Uh, <laughs> um, but, um, the thing was, though, is that those are like some pickup shots they did for, to help maybe introduce him into a cinematic universe. From what I understand, they originally did not have that as the ending. Just, I think the original ending was him just be, getting, being fed the butt and him opening his eyes. I'm pretty sure that probably was going to be the original ending. So what I understand is that they... Had no original intention to make this Dracula, anyway, part of their cinematic universal monster oh, okay. universe. But, you know, maybe the tracking for this movie was good. Maybe it's going to do better than we thought. Because it's not bad. It's an entertaining watch. It's short. If you want to kill them an hour and a half, by all means, I recommend it. Um, on the whole, though, as far as movies go, it's not the, it's not the worst movie I've seen this year. I think that's Phil goes oh, to oh, uh, yeah. Haunted House 2. Oh, man, was that bad. I didn't see that. There's a reason you didn't see that. I saw that by myself. (laughs) Uh, Because I want to entertain you folks. I'm going to sit through shit to entertain you. Um, No, yeah, that that, that is easy by far. One of the worst movies I've seen this year. Um, And I've sat through Transformers 4 and um, The Rover, which I know a lot of people like. I find a lot of people do like The Rover. I know I got a dislike or two on my review for my uh, comments on The Rover. I'm sorry. I didn't like the rover that much. The only thing that really saves the rover is the atmosphere of the film and Guy Pierce. That's it. Don't get me started on Robert Pattinson. <laughs> um, he's not a bad actor, but the way you described the movie, it doesn't um, sound... Here's the thing. I'm disagreeing. I'm saying he's not a good actor. I'm flat out saying it. Robert Pattinson is not that good an actor. I'm not saying he's great, but he's not, like, god-awful. I mean, he's not the worst actor in the world by far. I mean, in the top ten actors, top ten worst actors in the world, he's probably not in the top ten. But he's not a good actor. No, um, by that, I would probably say. I think he's okay. He was good in Harry Potter. He didn't have a very big role. He was though. killed in Harry Potter. I know. Um, so yeah, I'll give my we'll give our ratings, I guess, after this because I I, I, I haven't. What, I don't know what I would rate. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm saying we'll do our trailers first. Um, real quick, I got Whiplash trailer again. Uh, Sam didn't say that she had to go out and do something. Uh, re- use the bathroom before, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, but anyway, um, always real, use the bathroom before movies. real quickly, um, Whiplash, I spoke about it before. It's got, um, JK, JK Simmons in it and, uh, Miles Teller. Miles Teller plays a guy who's in an orchestra, wants to be like a, a great, like one of the great dra- jazz drummers. 
Uh, J.K. Simmons is an instructor who is a perfectionist, wants to bring out the best, but he is kind of cruel in the way he does it. Like, if you, if you, you'd have to watch the trailer to really know what I'm talking yeah. about. But um, it's called uh, Whiplash if you want to look it up. Um, um, it looks good, though. I mean, from what I'm hearing, Miles Teller, J.K. Simmons, these guys are getting. Well, these guys could possibly be up for like award, Academy Award, maybe even Oscar for one of them this year. They're, it's that only looking that good. And I yeah, admit, the trailer looks good. It looks like a good movie. Okay, you walked in on this one on Dear Black People. I've actually already gotten this trailer no, before. Isn't it Hey White People? Or dear no, Dear. White no, excuse me, Dear White People. You're right. Yeah. Why did I write black? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it was because of the predominantly black cast. Um. Yeah, I've already gotten this trailer before. I've talked about it before, but I haven't talked about it with someone. So there we go. Um, it's a good satire, anyway. It looks uh, interesting. It looks funny. Um, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a good, um, looks like a decent comedy. Because that is what it is. It's been playing up like a comedy, satirical kind of thing where, you know, black, you know, black people can't be racist and stuff like that. Even black people are calling her racist. Yeah. Because she's basically got a radio show where she's talking about the pro- why white people are racist and all that shit. And it's like, he's like, black people can't be racist. T- race, basically, race defines this, um, uh, disadvantage from the race you're talking about, essentially. So white, so from the stereo point, the stereotypical point, white people can be racist, black people cannot, because white people are shitting on black people for so long. I think it was disadvantage. Disadvantages, minority, yeah, so, minority yeah, like something that? like that. And it's like, that, you know what? That might technically be the definition of racism by the words. But if you really think if by, by yeah. the actual action of racism itself, no, racism can be can exist in any race. Yeah. Because racism is not about the definition. Racism is about how you act towards people. That is that is what racism truly is in my mind. Uh, that being said, it still looks racism funny. Racism if you act negatively toward a certain group of people. Well, you know, just I, in general. I, I, well, no, a certain race well, of people. Like, let's be clear. Because fu- <clears throat> well, that, that's yeah, that's what it's racism. Because like, I can act, I can act negative. I act negative towards just a like, lot just of people. Like sexism. Though. I act negative towards a lot of people. Men, women, stupid people mostly. So I'm racist against stupid people. <laughs> uh, that doesn't make me a racist. <laughs> that doesn't make me a racist. It makes me a bigot. There's a difference. No one says one. Um, <laughs> And then we got the Seventh Son trailer, uh, a completely new trailer for this movie. We got this trailer about a year ago. I didn't even remember <clears> it. Uh, you, I, I remembered it vaguely. I'm like, what is this? And then I saw Jeff Bridges pop up again. I'm like, oh, this is a new Seventh Son trailer. Um, he is the Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. Um, it's it's fine. It looks fine. It looks it like looks it looks interesting. It looks basically kind of like this movie did. A fun kind of sit down, it looks enjoy like a yourself good movie. Fantasy movie that I would enjoy. Well, that's a monster effect. So I'm looking. Oh, yeah. I love monsters in movies. Uh, it's got yeah. The kid is basically like the last of a group of knights. Him and Jeff Bridges, and apparently um, Julianne Moore is the villain. <laughs> With uh, she's some like metallic like monster. No, thing. no, that was her minion. The um, oh crap. Oh, right. Digimon. Uh, Demon. Uh, I can't remember his name. You remember, you remember in Guardians of the Galaxy that, um, that, again, not to be right, the black guy, the guy in the very beginning who's like, who are you? Who's pointing the gun at Star Wars? Like, it's like, yes. I'm Starlet. Who? That was him. Oh, uh, you would, okay. He's been a lot. He's actually, I love him, really. I really do. Because he elevates, any, as I, I put it when I talked about uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2, because he voiced the villain in that. He, oh. level, he elevates anything to a form of entertaining I enjoy. He's like, I, I loved him in Constantine, where he's Papa Midnight. I... Uh, Never let, never back down. It's not that good of a movie, but I enjoyed him in it. I loved him in Push. Push was Push is a fun movie. I, I like Push a lot. Um, so yeah, so it looks entertaining. It looks like this movie did for me. <clears throat> so to get entertaining to go watch. And to harken back real quick to this movie, this movie was entertaining. It, I thought oh, yeah. it was entertaining. Yeah, yeah. it's good, worth a go watch, especially for the Halloween season. We need at least some sort of thing, something oh, Halloween yeah. related. Besides getting saw again for a week straight, which you weren't there. There was an advertisement for the fact we're getting Saw in theaters for um the, for Halloween for Again. the week. and we get Nightmare on, Nightmare for Christmas uh, on Halloween. I'm okay They're with uh, bringing that, that back. As far as Nightmare Before Christmas and it's Halloween based with Jack Skellington, I don't watch it during Halloween ever. I watch it during Christmas. It really does feel more like a Christmas movie. To I me. watch it during Halloween, and then like I've seen it so many times at a certain <laughs> person's house that it's. Kind of like, okay, I've, I've seen this. In I watch it about, right now I watch it about once a year for Christmas. Uh, last one we got was Black Hat. Again, I had, uh, again, had this one. I think I had attached to Gone Girl. Uh, you haven't seen this one yet, have you? No, I have not. Yeah, so um, apparently there's this, like, this uber hacker hacking into the world and stuff. 
their, their towns blowing up nuclear power plants. Um, and Chris Helmsworth, of all people, is the <laughs> hacker who's trying to find him and stop him. And he was basically, you know, convicted and stuff like that for crimes. And now he's, you know, not. Mm. Uh, so Mark just popped out really quickly. Um, we're almost done anyway. So, um, yeah, um, it looks okay. Uh, what do you think? I liked it. Um, uh, it looks it looks good, but it doesn't look like something I'm like, well, you know, extremely interested in. Well, you know what my problem is? I know immediately what the guy's motivation is in that movie. He's got a god cl- god complex because you know he says it's not political, it's not about money or anything like that. He's basically making a statement that he can control the world with from his magic fingers and his laptop. He's got a god complex. So right there, I'm like, I already know your motivation. Please prove me wrong when I see that because I will probably see that. Um, so yeah, that's all the trailers we got that she wasn't available for, or she was available for. The last three. I was <clears throat> for. Yeah, and I had already talked about the ones that she didn't show up for. Um, so yeah, final thoughts. I enjoyed this. I had fun with it. It's a good, uh, little sit down with Yeah, um, it was pretty entertaining. I liked it. Overall, it's not necessarily a, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a seven. It's maybe like a, it's a 6.5. Um, it's got, it's got some issues. It's nothing... Tra- it's also short. It's rushed at points. It's got some weird effects. Some of the shaky cam is distracting. Um, some of the cinematography, so the cinematography though, is very lovely. Uh, especially some of the pa- the uh, shots of Transylvania. Yeah, like they were in Transylvania. Um, so yeah, I gave it about 6.5. It's it's worth a watch. Uh, what about you? Yeah, see, I don't know. Like, like, give me a scale, and I'd probably say it's a little in the middle, leaning a little bit more good. Uh, it could have been better. I wanted oh, a little bit yeah. more. I kind of wanted a little bit more. Oh, I yeah. I was feeling a little dissatisfied. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way to put it. There's um, there's a there's a what wanting from this movie. Like, you didn't see all you could. Yeah. Like, when he actually puts his armor back on, which I talked about briefly, he's got some cool looking armor because he's the dracula means son of the dragon so he's got this red almost chinese dragon armor almost like a samurai and um <laughs> wielding a, like a long sword so he's not necessarily japanese so mark could be happy with that if he saw it um but um we don't see him be overly badass in the armor very much like we see him dressed in his normal attire being a vampire but when he puts on the armor i was expecting him to just like Ramp, run through people through and yeah. stuff like that. He fucking impales a vampire because he's the impaler, but you know, whatever. So yeah, you have to get there. You're right. This movie leaves stuff to be desired. That's why. I, so yeah, I would rate it a six point five. It's still worth a watch. Um, there's nothing wrong with the performances. Just the movie's technicalities as a whole. Um, so yeah, on a scale of one to ten, what would you say? Probably see you know, each of the six point five. Six point five. All right. Oh, uh, so that's all we got for today. I'm glad we can actually finally get one up on time. Mark got on my case out there. If you noticed, I spoke. If you go back to earlier in the review where I spoke to my acquaintance outside, I'm kind of tired of us doing reviews on his thing on his camera and not getting them up. Yeah. So, so when me and Sam, we did. yeah. So when me and Sam now try to see a movie together, I'm gonna try to bring my laptop along and actually do the reviews there um or then so yeah so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed like comment share subscribe uh if you think your friends will like us by all means share us along we appreciate all our viewers we really do uh if you want us to review something put it in the comments below let us know or contact me mark or sam on facebook you can find us fairly easily um so the next one at least i'm seeing is the judge the robert duvall robert Downey jr one um i've been hearing that's been getting mixed stuff but i'm really looking forward to seeing it. i've also been hearing that the performances given are like amazing, like solid, mm-hmm. like yeah. truly solid. Uh, and like this might be one of the Roberts, uh, Robert Downey's anyway, uh, best performances to date. And then if I can, because I'm actually got, I'm actually uh, going to be gone for a few days next week. I'll probably be back on Thursday to see another movie, whatever's coming out next week. But um, if I can, I'm going to try to catch Birdman on either Sunday or Tuesday, assuming that came out. I have to check to make sure that actually came out, because <laughs> Mark said Birdman actually came out. I'm like. I need to see Birdman because Birdman looks awesome. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next one. Bye.